Hi, Claudia here from Create with Claudia. Thanks so much for joining me today. I'm going to be showing you today how to make another table runner in my holiday series. This month, or this this time, it's uh, the Christmas table runner. So here it is without further ado. This is what we're going to be making this time. And it's a Christmas wreath table runner. And hopefully you can see the whole thing there. It's a great project for us scrap quilters. I know if you follow me, you know that I loved scrap quilting. This one I used a few more, a few less fabrics. I didn't use it. it; wasn't as scrappy as some of my other ones. But this is easily made into a scrappy top as well, or table runner, excuse me. Head over to my website www.createwithclaudia.com where you can get this pattern for free. It is a free table runner pattern. You can download it. I have a PDF file on there for you. I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. I always love new subscribers. Thank you so much. I am also on social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, very rarely on, on, um, twi uh, excuse me, on TikTok. Um, I'm at Create with Claudia, so check that out too. So thanks so much for watching and enjoy the video. Okay, so to make this table runner, you're going to need three different fabrics, or possibly four, depending on how you want to color yours. You can use scraps, too. This is great for scraps, like I said at the intro. Um, but if you're going to do it uh, this way, you're going to need four different fabrics. You're going to need the white fabric, and from the white fabric, you're going to need three quarters of a yard for all of the background. I, I call the white fabric my background. For all of the red, you're going to need a quarter of a yard, and that can be scraps or one solid piece like I used here. Uh, it's up to you. And then for the green, you need a quarter of a yard, and that is for these, the wreath and for these little corner squares. Now you can see where I mixed it up a little bit, and I used different colored fabric for the, the um, corner squares versus the wreath. I had this really cool pine uh, needle green which was perfect for the wreath so that's what I used for that and then for these corner these little accent pieces I used a different green so for that for the green you need a quarter yard and as is usual with most of my projects I like half square triangles so there are a lot of them um, I apologize up front if you don't like them but um, they're, they're just perfect for this for this table runner so the first fabric we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the white and for the white you're going to need the following. You're going to need two squares cut three and a half inches. So two squares of the white cut three and a half inches. Staying with the white fabric, you're going to need 34 squares cut three and a quarter inches. And that's for those half square triangles, that sort of candy cane border, and also for some of the part of the wreath as well. So 34 squares cut three and a quarter inches. And lastly for the white fabric, and you'll need a lot of these, you need two and a half inch squares, and you're going to need 73 of them. So 73 two and a half inch squares of the white. So that's for your white fabric. For the red fabric, for red, you're going to need two squares cut three and a half inches. So that's your red, and that will be for that hourglass. Those three and a half inch squares that we're cutting are for that hourglass unit to make the bow on the wreath. And then you're going to need 26 squares cut three and a quarter inches. And again, that's for that candy cane or that striped uh, border. That's of the red. And lastly, for the green, you're going to need eight squares cut three and a quarter inches. That will be for those corners of the wreath to help it get that circular shape. So eight squares cut three and a quarter inches. Then you're going to need 16 squares cut two and a half inches. And this is for the wreath fabric. So if you want to use different greens, you can. If you want to use them all the same, you need 16 squares cut two and a half inches. And last but not least are those accent pieces around the border. Um, you're going to need 10 squares cut two and a half inches. And as, like I said before, I used a different color green for that. And that's all there is to it. So that's what you need to cut. So then we're going to, uh, then we need to make a couple of units before we can assemble the top. The first one's going to be the half square triangle. So if you know how to do the half square triangle, go ahead and skip ahead. The next unit after that that we're going to make is the hourglass. But I'm going to go ahead and start now with the half square triangle unit.
Okay, so to make the half square triangles, you're going to need all of the squares that were cut three and a quarter inches in every color. There were some red ones, a few green ones, and then the white ones. And I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make it on the, the green and white squares. But what you're going to do is you're going to pair up each of your fabrics. You're going to have one of the background or one of the white and one of the green or red to make your half square triangles. So the next thing you want to do is you want to mark a line on the back side of the lighter fabric and I'm just going to get my ruler here and I'm using a pencil, I normally wouldn't use a pencil um, but for you to be able to see it better on the camera I like to use a pencil and I'll make it nice and dark again I normally wouldn't make it that dark you want to make a line from corner to corner with a ruler that's going to be your sewing guide you're going to sew down a quarter inch on each side of that line but first you need to pair these fabrics up so you've taken your one green and then lay this on top, right sides facing together, you always want that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to sew down each side, maybe I'll use the pencil as a pointer, each side of that drawn line. And when we come back I'll show you, um, I'm going to go do that, and you use a quarter inch seam allowance, and I'm going to go do that, and when I come back I'll show you what it looks like. Alright, so unfortunately and I do this every time and I keep meaning to change out my, my thread in my machine. I have sewn, if you can see it, a quarter inch down each side of that drawn line. You can probably see it better on the green. There you go. And you can just imagine that drawn line down the middle of there. And the next thing we want to do is cut this in half. So we're going to take our rotary cutter and our ruler. This is easy. And you're just going to cut down. And this time you're going to cut on that drawn line. And there you get, you get two half square triangles out of those two pieces of fabric. So it's going to look like that. And I'm going to go take them and press them. And then what I'm going to do is show you how to trim them down. Because you want your, each of your squares is going to measure two and a half inches. Alright, so I have done that. I have pressed it nicely. And now we're ready to trim it to two and a half inches. So you're going to have to have a ruler like, well you don't have to. But this is the ideal ruler. It's a ruler like this. It's a square ruler. I love these. Um... It has that diagonal line drawn on it. I can match that up with this diagonal line. It just makes it really easy to cut these squares. So I'm going to find, first off, I want to find my two and a half inch point here. So I have an idea of how big I need the square to be. But before I do that, I want to even off one edge. So I'm going to line up that diagonal line in the middle with that drawn, that printed line on the ruler. And I'm just going to square this off so I have a nice starting point. There we go. So now I have a nice sharp point and I'm ready to use that. I'm going to put that on the ruler at the two and a half inch mark. So here's my two and a half inch mark. Here, and it sort of comes to a point on that diagonal line there. And I'm try to line everything up. Sometimes it takes a little bit and honestly doing this on the camera, the angle's a little weird. Normally it's easier if you're looking straight down on top of it. But I think that's good. Then you're going to take your rotary cutter, carefully cut it, and there you have a two and a half inch square. And you're going to need to do a lot of these, so go ahead and um, once you're ready, I would put on your favorite playlist or uh, podcast, whatever you want to do, um, and get to work. It is a lot of cutting uh, to do the half square triangles. When you're done, you should have 68 half square triangles in both and you'll have the majority of them will be red and white but then you'll have some green ones for your um uh, for the wreath okay so that's how you do the half square triangle so the next thing i'm going to do is my hourglass unit so this is the hourglass unit that we have to make and it does look like an hourglass there's top and bottom and this is for the ribbon for the wreath so we don't need to make a lot of them there are only four of these units in it so for that you're going to need your three and a half inch squares of fabric there were two in red and two in white and the first thing we need to do is draw a line sort of like we're making a half square triangle but we don't go quite as far in the steps so you're going to draw that diagonal line from corner to corner and again, I'm making this dark for camera. I normally would not make it that dark. And the first thing you're going to do is sew down, well, excuse me, the first thing you're going to do is match the fabrics, lay one on top of the other, right sides facing, so those are the right sides. Line them up, and then you're going to sew a quarter inch down each side. So I'm going to go do that, and I'll be right back. 
Okay, so I have sewn down the sides. Uh, you cannot see it, I know, because of the white threads. So I'm going to flip it over. So you can just imagine that line drawn down the middle like so, and we're going to cut those in half just like we did with the half square triangle. And then that's where the similarities end. So we're just going to cut on that drawn line. And then what I'm going to do is press, uh, press these open. I'll be right back. Okay, so these are pressed open, and the next thing you want to do is you're going to flip one over, and you're going to draw another line from corner to corner. Just like so. i got that little seam in there so the, the ruler wiggles around just a little bit. So there's your line. And then you're going to place these right sides facing but sort of with opposite. See how you can see that? The red will be facing the white and vice versa on the other side. And I pressed both of these to the dark, which is what you should do. And they will nest really nicely together. You want them, the seams just to, to butt up right next to each other. And then I will actually pin just so they don't slip when I'm sewing. And just make sure the other side's equal to, or not equal, but if it's nice and that it's just right up against each other. And just pin there, just so there's no slipping. And then again, you're going to sew quarter inch down each side of that drawn line. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. Okay, so let me take these pins out. There you can see where I have drawn down each side of the drawn line. This one you can see better because I'm using the, the white thread with the, the, you can see it on the darker one. And now we're going to cut, uh, take our rotary cutter and cut along this drawn line. Kind of like magic. Close it up. Always make sure to close that when you're... Fingers crossed. This is always the uh, nervous moment is make sure your center points match. Fold it over and whew, they do. They're pretty good. I'll take that. There's your hourglass shape. Now we are going to trim this down just a little bit, but I'm going to go press these open and then I'll show you how to trim them down. It's very Alrighty. So there's my hourglass. Love it. I always This one's a fun one to make. Um, and maybe it's because it is a little bit like a half square triangle. I don't know. Um, so the, what you need to do here is you need to find your center point. So a half of one and a half is two, uh, excuse me, a half of two and a half is one and a quarter. So you're going to find that center point right here. There you go, where your one and a quarter mark is. You're going to put that right on that part, right where these seams, right here where all four of those seams meet. And that's how you center it. And there's a little bit of trimming to do, not much. And you just want to make sure everything lines up. I, I usually go by this diagonal line first and then trim just those edges, get all those little dog ears off. And you're again trimming down to two and a half inches. But we need to make that first cut really carefully. So there is a little bit of trimming there. So now you're ready. This will be your two and a half inch point. And hopefully, if you cut it right, if you double check yourself, you go over to here, it's one and a quarter, you are good to go. And then we trim off the rest. Ta-da! There you go. There's your hourglass. I'm going to do that with the other one. And after this now, that's all there is to it. We need to now set, uh, excuse me, piece the whole table runner together. Okay, so here it is all laid out. Each of the little squares, it's all ready to be sewn together. You do want to be careful with this um, because it's very easy to get those half square triangles twisted around. So take your time, but I would piece it row by row like so, and then piece each of the smaller rows together and then you have your table runner top ready. So here's the finished table runner top. I still need to quilt it and everything. I'm going to just do easy straight line quilting on this one. It's a really quick make. Uh, it, I mean it takes a little while to sew the top together but uh, once it's done the quilting is actually pretty simple. So this is how it turns out. I'll probably use the lighter green for my binding and I'm just going to use a solid back. Um, and when I come back I'll show you the whole thing. So I hope you had fun making this table runner with me today. I'm going to show you one more time. This is how it turned out. 
You can see I used the lighter green. I sort of pulled from those, those squares, those accent squares, and used that for my binding. And I used a nice pine needle fabric for my wreaths. And then some fun red for the uh, candy cane and for the ribbon, and then white for the background. It's a lot of fun to do. I hope I've inspired you to give this table runner a try. Again, it is a free pattern and it is available on my website so you can print it out and follow along uh, with the layout. That, that helps a lot, with, especially with something like this where there are a lot of half square triangles. My website's www.createwithclaudia.com. Also, if you like this video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I always love new subscribers. Thank you so much and I hope I've inspired you. I do bring all sorts of tutorials, patterns, tips, that sort of thing on my YouTube channel. I'm also on social media at Create with Claudia. So thank you so much for watching and have a great day.